live sound check. You got a great um, group, huh? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. And they're all and they're all pugs. Yay, yeah. pugs. Um, so I would like to start by introducing Karen. So I know many of you have seen Karen around, but Karen is, uh, has been around the industry for quite a while. She is um, a certified kitchen and bath designer, and she is also a certified aging in place specialist. So, uh, and as she, if you, if you didn't join us, if, if she hadn't said it by the time you had joined us, she is a kitchen nerd. Um, and which no, is, you, which is a great my thing. Secret. <laughs> this is a great thing. No, you, that's okay. That's okay. That makes yeah. you, that makes you, uh, you know, very knowledgeable in everything that has to do with kitchens. So that's fantastic. So, um, and, uh, so I'm, I'm Colin, you all know me, um, 2020 design power users group. Um, also have a website called designpugs.com. Uh, and I also have kitchendesignacademy.com that I've started. And uh, I know um, Kat Reynolds, she's in there in the chat is Mary, um, has, is, is one of my students, as is Karen. So um, it's good to be here. So Karen, I'm going uh, to send it on over to you. Okay. I'm so excited to be here today. And I was going to make a confession that, to Colin that I'm a kitchen nerd because I was sure he had no clue. And... It's very strange, but kitchen ventilation fascinates me. <laughs> so, as, so it does, as it does me, I have, to be, I have to be honest. Does it? Okay, so today we're going to discuss kitchen ventilation. And I'm just so thrilled that you all came. Thank you so much for coming. And so basically what we can see here in our first slide, this is decor cabinetry. This is a walnut hood. But what we're noticing in the industry that things are becoming more linear. And so you're going to notice that a lot of the hoods are going to have this linear, more very straight featured, a little bit contemporary, but it can also be used in traditional rooms. So we feel that a beautiful hood can be the focal point of a room, or it can just be an accessory. And then what we're gonna talk about is professional blowers and the various CFM choices. So following, we're gonna give you a quick rule of thumb on the process of vending. So kitchen designers, we really need to understand CFM and zones. And we want you to communicate with your customer about CFM, which is your cubic feet per minute. And the higher the CFM on a range hood, the higher the airflow. Zones is your noise level. You're gonna find that a zone level of one is gonna be comfortable and free from noise. Two is gonna be the normal conversation, two to four. And a five to seven is a conversation with additional noise. So it can be just a little bit noisier. So basically your range hoods are gonna rid the home of the grease, carbon monoxide and the odors, which create a healthier environment for the family. And the word I imagine you've all been hearing is biophilia, which is wellness. And it's becoming a big topic this year after going through this coronavirus virus thing. So your properly sized range hoods are gonna help create wellness for the families that you work with. And then with the definitions, I'm gonna hand this over to Colin. Okay, so um, Karen, you're gonna to have to, you're, you're running the, the show oh, with the, uh, oh, wait, no, I can, re <laughs> I can wait, I can request remote control. I'm gonna do that right now. Okay. So I did request it and you need to grant it. Oh, approve. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's okay, I, that's, that's good. That'll, that way you don't have to, all right, cool. All right, great. So um, from Wikipedia, these definitions are from Wikipedia. And as we know, um, Wikipedia is always accurate. Uh, but for this, for our purposes, things, things like this that, that can't be disputed, like you know, political things and invasion of countries is, is perfectly fine. So uh, BTU is uh, the British thermal unit, which is a unit of heat. It's defined as the amount of heat required to raise the, to raise the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. So your burners are, are measured in BTUs and that's what BTU means, uh, the amount of heat required to raise the temperature. Oops. Uh, CFM, oops, is a unit of measure uh, that is, sorry, volumetric flow. <laughs> My camera's in the way. It's used by manufacturers of blowers and compressors uh, to move air, either a positive pressure or a vacuum must be created. The higher the CFM, the higher the airflow, sort of as, as we said just a bit ago. And then zones, of course, is a unit of loudness, the subjective perception of sound pressure. A range hood with a noise level of four zones is louder than a fan that has a noise level of one zone. 
the lower the sewn number, the quieter the fan. And, and uh, you know, many of you may have, have encountered this, but some of them sound like a small jet airplane taking off. So they can, they can get to be quite loud. And uh, there are ways around that as we'll, as we'll see in just a little bit. So, oops. Um, so one of the things that, that needs to be taken into consideration and many contractors don't know this. So as designers, we, we have a lot of responsibilities and one of them is to make sure that our contractors that we work with um, know these types of things. And the, the duct run can affect the performance of the range hood. So this is actually a duct length calculator from the Brone Newtone website and you enter a bunch of data and it spits out how far your, your recommended length of straight ducts is. And one of the key things to note is the more elbows that you put in this, the faster this number goes down. So the more things that you have to turn around, that number goes down. And the danger there is if it doesn't have enough, enough power to push, especially grease through, then you start getting grease buildup on the insides of your ducts. And that's not a good thing. Okay, so we're gonna talk about how to determine the CFMs that you're going to need for your range hood. And you can see here that we have a gas range. So you're gonna size your range hood on the heat output of your range. So for gas ranges and cooktops, for every 10,000 BTUs, you need 100 CFM on your blower. So 100,000 BTU divided by the 100 CFM means that you need at least a 1,000 CFM hood. So 1,000 CFM range hoods may be loud, so you need to really check the zones on it. And the, you may require makeup error, but we're gonna talk about more about that a little bit later. So here we're gonna show you examples of how to determine how many BTUs your range is. So this is a Wolf 60 inch range and we're going to add the BTUs. On the Wolf website, you're going to see that they're going to give you this, this uh, calculation here. So we have six 15,000 BTU burners. So we know that's 90,000. And then we also have the 9,200. So for this range, we know we're going to have 99,200 BTUs. That means when we divide it by that 100, we're gonna need a 992 CFM range hood. When we go to a Viking, this is a 48 inch range. So this range is 12 inches less. And then you see here, we've got one, two, three, four, five burners that are gonna be the 12,500. And then we have one 16,600 BTU burner. So your total here is 91,600 BTUs. And you can see here that we're gonna need a 916 CFM hood. So this is really important that you really understand how to figure out what type of hood are the CFMs you'll need for these high functioning ranges. Usually when they have the, uh, the walks, they're using at least the 15,000 BTUs on a burner. So right here, this is a Viking 40 inch range hood with 1200 CFM. And we know that at least a 1,000 CFM range hood is needed, so we know this will work. There's a couple things to keep in mind. When we had the range, it was a 48 inch wide Viking. You can either use a 48 inch hood above it, but sometimes kitchen designers will actually add three inches to each side of the hood, and we'll make it a 54 inch range hood, just to give it you know, a more coverage area so that everything goes up into the hood. With this, your motor can be installed remotely. Now with an electric range, they're totally different. Your recommendation is 100 CFM to every 10 inches of width. So on a 30 inch electric range or cooktop, we know that it's gonna be basically, we'll be using a 300 CFM hood. On an island, I like to use 150 CFM per 12 inches. So if I have a 36 inch range hood, that would be three times 150, I'd be using a 450 or higher CFM range hood. And this is range hoods that we would use for a 30 inch electric range. So we know we only need like a 300, correct? For the 30 inch. So with our Brone, this is a 200 to 500 CFM. And we have here one that's gonna be a 400 CFM. 
what you'll find is if you go to your um, like Lowe's or Home Depot or one of those type of stores, you're going to see that they have a lot of range hoods in stock that are basically in the 220 range. It'll be a range uh, of CFM. They're brown range hoods, but they're a little bit light on the pulling power. So it's really better if you're able to get within the 300 range. This 200 to 500 CFM probably has a three speed so that the low speed will be at 200 and then it'll go up at the highest speed to the 500. And then this is um, some of the beautiful wood hoods and custom wood hoods that you can design with. And if you could look here, we have this beautiful traditional hood. It has the corbels on it. They're using the pot fillers and you can see how you can do all the beautiful decorative tile. Here's the one that we had on the first screen. That is the walnut hood that's very linear. Again, this is very linear, but it has that shiplack look. And I've noticed that the shiplack look has been popular for about a year now, Colin, do you think? I forgot I was muted. I'm sorry. Yeah, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, so probably two to three years, um, probably as long as nearly as long as Fixer Upper was around. Yeah. So thank you, Joanna Gaines, for Shiplap and bringing Shiplap into everybody's lives. Yeah. So I have noticed the Shiplap hoods. It's I'm kind of surprised because it isn't something we would have used like 10, 15, 20 years ago. No, yeah. 10, 15, 20 years ago, we were getting rid of Shiplap, right? Yeah. We were we were painting over it. Yep. Or, we were, or we were tearing it out or something like that. You know, nobody, nobody really wanted it anymore. So yeah. it's made a resurgence over the last few years for sure. Yeah, it's very popular now. And you'll see here we have a beautiful wood hood with an arch bottom to it. Uh, these have been popular for a long time. It has a chimney. One of the things also, if your ceiling is higher than your 96 inches, you may need an extension that will go up for your hood. And then Colin and I were discussing yesterday a little bit about if you had a vaulted ceiling. Do you want to discuss that a little bit, Colin? Yeah. So if you if you have a vaulted ceiling, so if you're looking at the 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 shiplap one, for example, that's that's not so bad because that's going in the that's going along the front of the of the hood. It's you know it looks okay, but there still needed to be a, a fair amount of modification done to that to that hood box. But if you're if you're going in the other direction then you know you need to have you need to have some really good calculations so that can it can be a bit of a headache um i think it was i don't know if it was the the 2020 pug facebook group but it was a few months ago somebody was having an issue where they they had a chimney a stainless steel chimney going up to a um a vaulted ceiling that was going in the opposite direction and the homeowner didn't want any kind of a block that would flatten it or anything like that they wanted the 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 chimney to go right straight to the ceiling. So that requires the the services of a of a you know a metal smith at that point to make to make cuts like that. The average the average HVAC guy even can't really do that with finished stainless steel. It's easier with wood, uh, but still very difficult. Um, one thing that I want to point out, Karen, just because you were pointing out the the mm -hmm. um, this hood right here. Mm -hmm. um, so there are a couple of things. An another thing that can be bad for decorative hoods, especially, is low ceilings. So uh, yeah. here in the Northeast, you probably find this, um, we have a lot of 90 to 92 inch ceiling heights. Um, that can be very difficult because of the uh -huh. distance that you need off of a, off of a, a um, and we'll get more into distances in a minute, but uh -huh. it, off the, dis off the, the, the surface. So that's something that you can actually have a, a, a ceiling that's too, that's too low um, and makes it difficult to. Can you pull it back? Oh, don't do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. All right, I gave you, whoops, darn it. Oh, yeah, whoa. back, okay, there we go. Yep, back. <laughs> Making everybody dizzy, sorry. <laughs> well, if nothing else, we are inter entertaining, right? Can we go back one more? Oh. Nope, there we go. Okay, you want to so, stay there, sorry. Yeah, the one down here now, this is your hearth hood. Uh, I don't know if these are quite as popular. I see them once in a while. I think the major thing with these is because your sides are coming down close to your burners. I like to keep about 12 inches away from the burner to this side. I always worry about a fire starting or some crazy thing like that. This is basically your raised hearth. This makes it so that the sides don't come down. 
but it has the beautiful corbels, the arch front on it. So you have some absolutely beautiful hoods. Mm -hmm. With these, you are gonna need the power pack blowers and the liners. These are Stadichi wood hoods. And for all the 2020 users that are here, there is a catalog available in 2020.net. So you can download these into your drawings. You can see here we have two shiplap versions and now they're putting the metal along the bottom, which I think is really gorgeous. So we have some that are more linear and then we also have some absolutely beautiful that have like a shape to them. And then some of the range hood websites are the Brown, KitchenAid, Stanichi Wood Hoods, Best Range Hoods, Futuro, and Smeg. And you'll also find with Stanichi, um, they have the blowers on their website and they're called ventilators. So, Colin, I'm going to let you go through this. Okay. So, um, there, are, there are three types of blowers uh, that you will find. There's, there's an internal, which is, you know, probably 80 to 90% of what's out there has an internal blower. Anything that, that is a standard uh, type of hood, the blower is right there. The, the, the fan is right there. Um, an external, an external mounts on the outside of the house. So, either on the roof or on a sidewall of the house. Those are typically um, a little bit more, more involved and you have to really get involvement with the contractor. That's something that, that you know, a kitchen installer is not gonna do or anything. Um, and then inline is interesting. Inline, uh, you have duct work that goes from the liner into a crawl space or an attic or something where the motor is mounted. And then you have another piece of duct work that goes out to the outside of the house, either to, either to a, um, a hood type of thing on the outside of the house, on the roof or on the wall. Um, so those are three unique types. Um, the, the two remote- we're gonna, Yeah, we're also gonna go through this, yeah. The two more remote ones are, okay, go ahead. I forgot you had added, you had added- stuff, Yeah, so. I added three slides, yeah. Yeah, so, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I put the. I, I got ahead of myself. Uh, oh, hey, they're located within yeah. the hood structure, so only a single electrical connection is required, and that's an important thing to to note. And so everything's in one box. Um, but because it's right there in the room, it produces a higher level of noise. Uh, but they offer great performance for a longer period of time. They're they're more easily serviceable. Um, if you need to service the motor in um, in an internal blower it's right there. You can just open it up and, and service it. So, so the, the um, range hood blowers mounted externally, um, as we, as you saw, there's a, there's a, as I said, there's a roof mounted and a sidewall mounted, but it has a lot of moving parts involved. Um, but it, some feel that, that pulling the air might be, might be a little bit more efficient than pushing the air. So um, that's one benefit. And of course, there's much less noise. All you hear is a whoosh of air when you're near the, the hood. Um, and they do range from down, down at 300 CFM all the way up to 1500, uh, but it's much harder to install. As I said, contractor has to be involved. Um, there's siding involved, there's insulation involved. There's just a lot of different considerations with, a, with an external mounted one. Yeah, and if I can say right yeah. here, if they look uh, to the left here, here's a uh, roof mounted. Mm -hmm. And you can see here, here's one on the siding in the middle and on the right. Yeah, so, and, and then just different, different positioning. So this one is straight up out. This one's up with an elbow and then out. And this one's straight back. Yeah, so that, right will, that, will typically, that will typically vary depending on the manufacturer. So, as I said again, <laughs> and here's blowers, the lovely picture. <laughs> connect somewhere along the duct lines and push and pull the air through the venting. Uh -huh. So it pulls from here and then pushes it out. Um, they can be vented through the roof of the wall, but the goal is to minimize duct length. Um, this happens to reference best brand. Best is by Brown. Uh -huh. uh, inline blowers are installed between the point of use and the duct termination point. Uh, they may be installed in, the, in an attic space, utility room, or crawl space. Uh, and then you need electrical to both the blower and the hood. And the same goes with the external mounted. So yeah. Back so to yeah. So basically I think of the a blower and a range hood as the lungs of a kitchen. 
So just as our lungs filter out the impurities in the air we breathe, the proper range is going to filter out the impurities from there in the kitchen. And what we're seeing is this is a more industrial look with the baffle. And then we have the mesh filters, which are available. And then your, here's your hood liner. And what I did was I pulled some of the blowed uh, brown um, power packs. And you can, what you we're going to see is that they have all kinds of different uh, CFMs available and options with them. So right here, here's a power pack and a liner. And this is the Brown, and here's your model number. It's 27, 9, 6 in, 16 inches wide. And it has 400 CFM and 1.5 zones, which means it's actually very quiet. Your Brown Elite 30 inch wide custom hood liner is what you'll use with this. And you're gonna find that the liners come in 30s, 36s, they'll have different sizes. If we go over to the specification, that's going to be available on the Brown website. You can see here is your airflow of your CFM 400. And it also gives you your duct size that you need a six inch round. Uh, basically, they say the rounds are better to use. This has a halogen lighting. There are some with LED lights. And this is your zone level. So here again, with your customer, you can say very clearly, this is gonna be a very quiet fan. And then we're going here to the Brown Elite. This has your baffle, if we look up here. And this has an external centrifugal blower. So this can go from 500 to 1500 CFM. So this is gonna be a pretty hefty uh, motor. It has multi-speed controls, halogen lighting, and it's also very easy to clean. This will be with your external mount um, blower, so that, well, yeah, your external mount. So this would probably be mounted on the roof or on the siding due yeah, to the we, fact that a 500 CFM is going to sound like an airplane taking off in your kitchen. Or right. I, and I would imagine too that, the, um, that, that either of them um, are available for this type of thing, either the inline or the, or the external. The point yeah. is it's not, the, the motor's not inside. And uh -huh. there actually is um, a reason to be careful with that. Um, you can actually, so some of these, some of these, t um, tapered hoods, they taper so quickly up from the valance on the front mm -hmm. that you either have to get a, an internal blower with a tiny motor, um, or you have to do an external. And I actually know a designer that this happened to, um, it was a beautiful hood. It was a $3,000 cherry hood that, um, you know, they had to figure something else out because they couldn't use the internal blower like they thought they were going to. So they had to, um, and that's, this is, this is a situa situation where it was new construction and the designer just wasn't very involved in, in spe specifying the appliances. Um, so this is super, super important to get these specs as early as possible and then get them to commit to those appliances as early as possible because this type of thing is is really necessary and you can see that that the the liner itself is very low profile so you don't really need a lot of height in order to in order to house that so here we see some of the stainless hood options that are available you can see this one over here again it has a beautiful shape and it has the strapping on it and you can see that it looks like there's a bar running across the front here is your chimney hood, and what you're seeing now is they have the glass curved options. These are just basically very nice range hoods, uh, very simple. When we come down here, this again is what you're going to see in a lot of your home centers. You can get the 300, 400 CFMs on these type hoods. Then here's, we're back to a chimney with the glass. And this is actually a kitchen that I had designed where on the island, she is actually a gourmet cook. We use the chimney hood and this has glass on the bottom. It's absolutely gorgeous. And go, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say the ones in the upper right, the two in the upper right These um, guys. are really, yeah, they're gonna be, you know, when you want good ventilation and you have that lower ceiling height or you don't, or you have a, um, or you have a, a, a sloped ceiling where you don't, you know, th this is a, a, good, a good choice. There's still a good quality vent hood but you don't have to worry about the, um, you don't have to worry about the height of the ceiling as much. And down here on the left is this Luxor Island Range Hood by Futura, which is 48 inches wide. So if you get in any situations where you need a wider hood, this is really great. 
That's pretty without also, being obtrusive. Yeah. Um, and some of the copper range hoods, handcraftedmetal.com is where I found the three that are on the left side. These run in the 8,000 to 10,000 range, so they are very pricey. But I remember 15 years ago pricing a copper hood and it was $7,000. So it's probably in the neighborhood of where your handcrafted hot copper is going to run. But again, you can see how beautiful these are. This bottom one in the middle has a semi-gloss finish and a smooth body, which gives it just a little bit of a patina, I believe. Now, if cost is an issue, you can still do copper. Z-Line Hoods has copper hoods. The patina is a little bit different than what you see on, say, the handcrafted metal ones, but it's gonna give you that copper finish if you're looking for it. What's really exciting are these Smeg range hoods. These are made in England. And I'll tell you, these are loaded with color so that you have a beautiful green, we have the yellow, we have a coral, we have the black, a stainless, a white, and if I win the lottery, I want this range hood right here because this is a Dolce and Gabbana, and I cannot believe that a fashion designer has gotten into the range hood and appliance market, <laughs> but I absolutely love it. Uh, it's just really beautiful. I think I'm very country French, and for some reason it's very appealing to me. These uh, usually are noiseless. They have a high extraction performance. The CFMs are usually about 600 on these. Now, what's happened is they've actually made collections, but I think the refrigerators are just a little too small for American kitchens. And, yep, and yeah, for me, I think the range would just be a little bit too much color. I could handle the hood. And again, over here on the left, you can see it gets even more colorful. So just some ideas if you have clients that are looking for this type of, uh, of um, appliances. Now what's really exciting is this Tekka range hood. They actually were started in Germany and from what I've read, 50% of the houses in Spain have Tekka hoods. Uh, it just has a perimeter suction system and as you can see, it's very high tech looking and very, a little bit more modern. So the suction system, if you can see here, actually it's perimeter, so it's going around the center. This is your centerpiece. So it's sucking in everything from around it. It has an echo power motor. It's 479 CFM and three speeds. So the, basically the small slot is showed in the body of the hood and generates high pressure, and it's gonna be a better and faster air extraction. So air cannot go further than the cooking area thanks to the speed and efficiency of the hood. And it keeps it cook free of odors and fumes. And then here we have a little bit more information on advantages. Futura and Tekka are the two range hood companies with the perimeter suction system. And the advantages of, of course, are the improved suction performance around the edges, the appearance, easy cleaning, and what's really exciting is it has a sound reduction. So it's not only the sounds are very low, but you can actually add an additional noise reduction system to this. So it's a very silent system. And in Futura hoods, there's 110 models that are available. So I think you could find anything for your customers. This I fell in love with. It's kind of a crazy hood. It's the Fotil 5 series. This little flap in the front actually raises up when you turn it on. They're, this is a 30 inch wide. They have a lot of different models. It's 600 CFM. With the wave of your hand, you can turn this on and you can turn it off. It also has a really unique motor. And if you look to the right bottom, you can actually see how with the side drafts ventilation, how your pot here has steam rising up and it's going up into the hood and then coming up through the ductwork. So now we're gonna discuss back drafting of range hoods. A kitchen exhaust fan can be powerful. A 1200 CFM fan can pull the ashes out of a nearby fireplace and possibly halfway across the room. So large, large exhaust fans may need makeup here. Usually when you get into about the 500 uh, CFM range, I think you need to be thinking about makeup air. Yeah, I actually am working right now with a, with a new construction client 
and their builder said 380 was the max that they could yeah. that they could have. Um, otherwise, they would they would have to have a change order and and have to have a have to have a, a makeup air uh, system put in. So uh, we had to we had to make sure we were specifying a product that was 380 or less. Yeah. So what we found is Brown has air dampers available, and we want you to work with your contractor to solve this issue. But we do have a really great little video here. And we're going to play this, and it tells you all about makeup air and backdrafting. Whoops. Um, lost you it. know what? Hang on a second. I need to. You probably need to run down. I need to turn the sound on because the sound is not ah. on. Remember we when we ran through oh, this? Oh, yeah, we, we had that, that? yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to. Um, I think I'm going to have to stop. Yeah, I'm going to stop sharing for about 30 seconds just while I turn this back on. And so share. Oh, there's no, oh, there we go. It's your computer sound. So you're sharing your screen, right? Yes. Okay, so you're gonna have to go in and, uh, you're gonna have to go in and, and do this. So go to your share. Okay. And then uh, the check the box down the bottom, share computer sound. There we go. And then click share. And yep. then we're sharing we again. There we go. There we go. Are you gonna play it or do I? I think you have to. Okay. And can everybody hear that? Today's homes are more airtight than ever. It's especially important that an adequate fresh air source be available. Otherwise, poor indoor air quality problems are compounded. With no controlled makeup air, outside air finds its way into airtight homes through undesirable places with undesirable consequences. For instance, backdrafting from naturally vented combustion devices such as fireplaces and water heaters can bring in harmful gases, smoke, or particulates. Air drawn in through windows and doors can result in uncomfortable drafts and window condensation. And outside air rushing between vapor barriers can cause potential mold problems. Range hood performance can also be negatively affected when there's an inadequate source of outside air. As a result, range hoods that operate over 400 CFM may cause home depressurization and operate at reduced performance, allowing smoke and odors to linger in the house. Building experts recommend and IRC code requires that homes with range hoods over 400 CFM have an interlocked makeup air damper. The Brone Universal Makeup Air System offers an easy solution for new construction or for retrofitting existing range hood installations. The system includes a sealed motorized damper assembly and an easy to install exhaust flow sensor that provides a synchronized system. What's more, the installation requires only low voltage wiring to the sensor and makeup air damper. The universal makeup air system includes unique components that deliver fresh air in a controlled, energy efficient manner for all Brown and Best hoods. No one else offers such a complete solution. Improved indoor air quality through balanced ventilation and optimum range hood performance. Only from your partners at Brown and Best. good uh, way to explain makeup air. It's so difficult to understand, but now that the homes are getting tighter, it's definitely needed. Um, uh, Joy has a question. She raised yes. her hand. So I just, um, Joy, if you could either put it into the, into the chat or the, um, or the, the question and answer box and just let us know what, uh, what your, what your question is, or if you, oh, it was a mistake. <laughs> okay. never mind. <laughs> Carry on. Well, anyway, now we've got the makeup air. 
So we're going to talk a little bit about over the range microwaves. And we basically feel like for ventilation, only use them if your space is limited. And what we're finding is the over the range microwaves, when they first came out, were 15 inches tall. So as kitchen designers, every time we did a cabinet above, we used a 15 inch cabinet above the microwave in a 84 inch high installation. Now they're going down to 17 inches. So we want you to really be careful about the height on the microwaves um, because it is, it's changing. I'm sure you've noticed that too, Colin. I think Colin's muted. Sorry, I thought that holding my space bar down was, <laughs> I'm the newbie, don't mind me. So um, anyway, so the, um, the, the time it can be an issue, especially is with a gas range, um, the electronics in the microwave are relatively sensitive and, you know, especially if it's not vented out and, you're, or, or, and or you're not using the vent uh -huh often enough then the electronics are sensitive. So you need to get that up a little bit. Um, what I find is in a semi-custom when you can adjust the height of a, of a cabinet above, uh, I find if you reduce the height by an inch and a half to two inches, and that brings it real close to, real close to level straight across the, the base, the wall cabinets. So it's not going up too high because then that's an issue for shorter people. And um, it's not too low which is a, an issue with the, the electronics. So it, it tends to work out pretty well. Yeah, and they, you can uh, vent them outside, most of them, or they are recirculating. Yeah, I believe they all can be vented outside. It's just a matter of just converting the, the flap yeah. to go one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, and always, always recommend, if it's at all possible, venting them outside, even microwave hoods. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that they, that they can be or that they're not. Um, I just had somebody recently say, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's vented out and it wasn't, it, it right. just recirculated. Yeah. And then you're going to find now what we're seeing is they've come out with the low profile microwaves. So these are only like 10 and 5 16 inch high. So I'm showing a 10 and 5 16 inch, inch high microwave on the left and your regular 17 inch on the right. So what's happening is say you have a customer that is just doing a partial remodel, but they're not taking out their cabinets. So this could be an 84 inch high installation and you have, they have an 18 inch cabinet here. So the 17 inch uh, microwave is gonna pull it down way too low. With these 10 and uh, basically seven eighths, you figure that you're about 11 inches here plus the 18, you're at 29. So if my cabinets are 30 inches tall here, you can definitely on a remodel put this little tiny microwave in at the 11 inches tall. Then and when we go over to the regular over the range microwave, since they're getting taller, really check your appliance heights, widths, and your depths just to make sure that you're not falling below this uh, backsplash area. It looks much nicer when you're not falling below it. And then also if they are cooking and they're using canning or anything and they have very large pots, sometimes you want to raise it up just a little bit higher. And as Colin said, at that point, you might want to use a custom size height on your cabinet. Then this is downdraft ventilation for stoves and cooktops. So we have electric and gas downdraft ranges. I had the uh, generator in my last house. I absolutely loved it. So the downdraft range is going to vent through the floor or the cabinet next to it to the outside. And it's going to depend on the way the floor joists run, if you can do this or not. Always consult your appliance specifications and your contractor for correct installation. This is going to eliminate your need for that overhead hood. And you can see here we have the Gen Air Electric, and that's on our left. And then here's the gas range. The KitchenAid gas is on the right. Both of those are going to be downdraft ranges. Here's your Gen Air Electric downdraft cooktops, and you can see here your downdraft actually is in the center. So when they go into the cabinet below that downdraft, you're going to have housing that's going to go into the lower cabinet and then out either through the floor or the cabinet on the side. These are your gas downdraft cooktops. This is a GE on the left, and again, you can see your downdraft area. And then this is a KitchenAid, and again, your downdraft area. Pop-up downdrafts. I found that the pop-ups are really better 
for the back burners than the front burners. Um, have you found that, Colin? Make sure I'm not muted. Um, yes, <laughs> yeah, they, they definitely. I mean, you know, the whole conversation, you know, probably needs to be had with your clients about the quality of, of how each thing, um, how each thing works. Um, so obviously your center downdraft is going to capture all four burners uh -huh. um, and your, your uh, pop-up is not, although depending on how high your pop-up is, some of the pop-ups like the one that you have on the screen now uh -huh. is 18 inches tall. That's yeah. huge. Um, so that gives you a little bit better, a little bit better. But the thing to remember is all of these things rise naturally. So when, when you're, when everything rises, the heat, the smoke, the fumes, everything rises, you're actually trying to, you know, defy gravity and you're trying to suck it down uh -huh. so that it's going down. Um, so, you know, make sure you're discussing with your clients, the quality of the ventilation, you know, obviously they're necessary if you have absolutely have to have it in an Island and you don't want a vent obstructing your view. Uh, and also for the security and safety of people that are sitting, if there's a seating area behind the cooktop or range, um, you want to have a, you want to have a pop-up downdraft. Um, but you know, up, up is always the best. If, if you can, if it can vent up, then that's going to be your best bet. So anyway. And with these, these pop-ups, what you're going to find too, they will not go on until it's actually raised up. So, and then all the housing will go under the cabinet. Uh, you're also going to see we have spec sheets here and I always go over the specifications when I'm using them because you're going to probably need to make the cabinet that it's going into deeper than your 24 inches. If your cooktop is basically 21 inches and then you also have the cutout for your pop-up and say that is showing right here at the two and three quarters inches, then we know that we're going to need extra room in that cabinet. So you might want to increase your depth. And then you can see here, again, these are cutout dimensions. And I would probably, if I was doing countertops that were gonna be templated, I would make sure that my template or our countertop company had all these dimensions. What do you think, Colin? Just to make sure that they have all the correct dimensions on it. <laughs> I think Colin's muted again. Sorry, my cat's meowing at the door to come in my office. Um, <laughs> the um, you can't have um, too much information. It's impossible to have too much yeah. information. And if anybody tells you, "Hey, you're inundating with inf information," say, "Look, I don't want to, there to be any mistakes." So you know, never uh -huh. apologize for giving too much information. So um, you know, if 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 they look at it and say, "Well, I don't need this," then you've given them the opportunity to to do it, and they can't you know, they can't come back on you. So, so definitely the more, the more information, the better, um, as long as it's useful information, there is, you know, stuff that's not quite as useful that, that may just be, you know, extraneous, but anything that is, that is useful like this is definitely worthwhile. Well, what I found with, um, say my countertop fabricators, I make sure they have everything. Um, I probably will have the pop-up at the house when they come to template so that they actually have that to measure because I find I want to keep all liability off of me. I want to make sure that they are taking responsibility for the things that they need to take responsibility for. So to me, specifications are like major, you know. And now we're going to talk about surfing, cooking surface clearance. So the NKBI guideline is to allow 24 inch of clearance between your cooking surface and a protected non-combustible surface including decorative hoods with ventilation, including regular range hoods. So you can see here we have our 24 inches and at that point it looks great. And we know it's gonna work well. So here's a picture just showing a 24 inch between your cooktop and your uh, range hood. Then what I did here is I showed what if you raise the hood. Sometimes I have the hood higher than 24 inches. What you're gonna find is when you raise that hood, I want you for every three inches above 24 to add 100 CFM. So at this point, we've taken it 30 inches instead of 24, that's six more inches. We are adding 200 CFM to whatever range hood we're using. So say we needed that 1000 CFM, 
we're now going to use a 1200 CFM. Another NKBA guideline is at least 30 inches of clearance between the cooking surface and an unprotected combustible surface above it. This includes a wood shelf above a stove or a cooktop. If you have a wood surface above the cooking surface, uh, we feel it's a good rule of practice to cover the underside with a metal surface. Metal will not burn so that if any fire starts or something, at least, you know, it, it protects the cabinet or the wood surface above it. And I've actually had some code enforcement inspectors um, before say, if you have um, under cabinet, uh, under, um, yeah, right, light rail or light shield yeah. mm -hmm. that, is, that is returned and above the cooking surface, uh, that if it comes out too far, they will fail it. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be careful of that when you, um, when you are doing a, a light rail in a high, high BTU specially situation. Oh yeah, that, high BTU. That could be, that could be considered uh, not, not okay. And probably the group doesn't know that I had a microwave fire this year. There was an actual fire in my microwave. And uh, how scary that was. I mean, to look and all of a sudden your microwave is on fire, the whole inside of it was like shocking. Thank God I didn't open it. But I think that if we've never had a fire, we don't realize how fast it spreads. So I think we want to just be extra cautious with everything we do. And above the range microwaves. So on a cooking surface clearance, I like to use the rule of common sense. So always check the specifications on your height and your width of your microwave. Over the range microwaves we know are gonna be the 10 and 78 inch high to the 17 inch high. The height of the microwave determines the height of the wall cabinet above it. So right now you can see here we have 19 inches of space between your cooking surface and the bottom of the microwave. And basically we're using an 18 inch between our countertop and our um, bottom of our wall cabinet. So that's our backsplash area. So we're taking it about one inches above the actual uh, backsplash area. But it's easy to get into, it's not too high. And I think you really have to take the height of your customer into consideration. How hard is it going to be for them to actually use the microwave? And don't allow, the, we feel like don't allow the microwave to drop below the 18 inches of space between the countertop and the wall cabinets. So the NKBA guidelines are guidelines. We want you to always check your building codes for your area. And what's really is exciting is we have an up coming class uh, that I've developed on selling for designers. And it's an actual NKBA CEU course. And Colin and I are going to be putting that on. So we're very excited about that. Um, we actually, when I took it to the NKBA, they approved us in a week, which was, I thought was amazing, Colin. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty fast turnaround for sure. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're really excited about that. So it's question and answer time and we're to help and all questions are welcome. And I think, I'm not, I don't know if I'm, if I was successful doing this before, but I think I'm gonna try and allow, yeah, it's not working. I'm gonna try and allow, allow the attendees to talk since there are only seven. Um, so Ronnie, oh. Ronnie um, has, uh, yeah, the, the, it's funny, as, as we were in the, when I was talking a few minutes ago about, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, as I was talking a couple minutes ago about the, um, the clearance to the ceiling and all that stuff and, and having, you know, a hood come down or versus a downdraft, but, but Ronnie's right, the, um, the ones that are flush in the ceiling. I think, I think Wolf was the first one to come out with one. And yeah. now there are several on the market. Um, so that's, you're right. That's, that's something that uh, probably the next time we present this, we should probably um, mention that because that's something oh, okay. that, that uh, that's becoming a little bit more popular. Um, and because of the, the reason that Karen said, the, the higher you go above the surface, the higher the CFMs, um, those, those have to be pretty high CFM. So thank you for mentioning that, Ronnie. We, we definitely, uh, definitely should have mentioned that. Um, anybody else? Does anybody have any questions on, on, uh, on anything on the backdrafting on the, um, CFM, zones, BTUs? Um, so Kat, the, the, the selling class, uh, we haven't scheduled it yet. 
but it's probably going to be, I don't know, I'm guessing maybe the first week of July, do you think? That's good for me. Yeah, so probably the first week of July. So um, yeah, so keep an eye out for that. You'll definitely see lots and lots of notice um, for when that comes for sure. But uh, so we're, we're all obviously gonna be providing a, a replay of this and uh, probably some links to some of the things that were referenced, some of the websites that were referenced. Uh, and, um, and, you know, probably the, um, probably let you know a little bit more about the, the, the class on selling, so. So does anybody, oh, has anybody used GE Profile Kitchen Hub? GE Profile Kitchen Hub. That's a good question. Has anybody used it? That's, that's, um, is the question. And I am ignorant. So I'm I have never see. heard of that. Is it something new? Profile Hub. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the, okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a TV and it's sort of like, um, sort of like an Alexa. It's a smart hub. It's a uh, microwave with a screen on the front. I'll, um, huh. I'll share my screen. Oh, should I stop chair? Uh, that's okay. I'll, I'm going to uh, stop your sharing and I'll start okay. mine. Let's see. All right. So, yeah. So, this is the GE profile. Oops. I'm going to get rid of all these windows. Boop. 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 So, um, yeah. So, this is the profile. Oh, there we hub. go. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know what it's funny. I I that's crazy. <laughs> didn't make it to the profile. Well, it's funny. I didn't make it to the profile booth at KBiz. I guarantee you, they had this on on display at KBiz. I only got as far as Monogram and and uh, Cafe. How I did, did not make it to that? the profile booth. So that's where that's where wow. this would have been. So, um, that's crazy. Yeah, that's that's really cool. That's really yeah. cool. Um, yeah, thanks, Maureen. That's uh, that's and and it's kind of neat. Look at look at how deep it is. And look at how yeah, very deep. look at how high it is, how how far it sticks uh -huh. down. Um, so you know the the current discussions of, um, but you know what those cabinets, those cabinets are not eighteen inches. I Do you think bet you higher? dollars to donuts those cabinets, and I've seen this in, um, you know, on TV and magazines where uh -huh. they do like twenty one inches. Yeah. In many places. Yeah, I've seen um, that. So yeah, it looks like uh, interesting. Which 21 for me would be just a little bit too high. Yeah. Uh, some of them are even 24 that I've seen. That's like the uh, refrigerators with all the, uh, the iPads on them and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar. It looks like it's, um, looks like it's Android. Hmm. Like an, like a giant Android tablet. Neato. Thanks Maureen. The, the kids would have a lot of fun new. with that, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. Too much. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, let's see. Floating shelf with the ventilation going through it. Hmm. So, um, Kat, Mary. She's in there as Mary. I know her as Kat. Uh -huh. She goes by Kat, Kathy. Anyway, um, so I uh, saw a kitchen recently that, uh, that, it, that had a floating shelf with ventilation going through it. Uh, huh. Can you think of the brand that would be used? Same design or event in the ceiling shelf. above an island, huh? Floating shelf with ventilation going through it. So, do you mean like a like a like a chimney of a chimney hood going through it? That's pretty neat. There was no hood below it. Yeah. Huh. If you find the picture, send it through. We'd love to see it. Yeah, definitely. Maybe we can figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, hmm. um, Megan asked. Uh, and we'll, we'll go back, go back to Mary's, uh, in a second, but, uh, Megan asked, does the blower and liner have to fit perfectly inside of the hood or can the hood be bigger? For example, a 30 inch wide blower liner inside of a 42 inch hood. It, it, it does make sense. And that sometimes, that sometimes, um, is an issue when you're working with, you know, the manufacturer, the cabinet uh -huh. manufacturer's hood and the, uh, and somebody else's liner. And 
I think the answer is it depends as long as you're, as long as you're, um, the part that's over the cooking surface is non-combustible. So in other words, if you have to put in a panel to make up that extra space, if that right. falls over the cooking surface, then that, that will potentially be an issue. Yeah, so, it needs to be metal, um, yeah. Probably. So usually yeah. what I find is it's usually more expensive, but the manufacturers that offer full boxed hoods mm -hmm. will offer a liner and blower solution all in one that they sell costs more than buying one off the shelf of the yeah, same definitely. exact thing, but you know that it, that it will, that it will fit and that it will work. So I think that if that is possible, then, then you can do that. The second thing would be, I've, I've known in the past of someone that had, had to have a liner custom fabricated by, by an HVAC shop. They were able to, to cut and, and bend stainless steel into um, a, a custom shape and then cut the opening for the, for the blower. It's a lot more involved, mm -hmm. but it's, it's necessary in order to, you know, to stay safe. So that, that probably makes more sense. Does that, does that answer your question, Megan? The blower will be smaller. It's the liner that's going to fit around it. That'll cover that. Underside right. Of right. The, yeah. And, and the, the blower can be smaller. Yeah. Um, but as long as it has enough CFM for uh -huh. your BTUs from your stove, then, then that should be fine. Uh, just, just the, um, the material probably can't be painted wood. I actually was just dealing with this just this past week. Um, trying to, the, the, the client had picked out a, a nice Zephyr power pack, uh, 500 CFM power pack with the baffles rather than the, than the mesh. Oh. And, um, it was nice. It was, it was like 800 bucks. But it would have been it would have been too Mickey Mouse in order to get it to work with the the hood solution that we were using the deco hood solution that we were using. So they ended up doing just the the simple Brone power pack that that gets shipped yeah. with it from the factory. Um, Three hundred eighty CFM incandescent bulbs, you know mesh filters, but they were fine with it. So I guess it depends on what people want. Oh, thanks. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you very much, Maureen. Um, I don't know if you're looking at the chat, Karen. Oh, um, how do I look at the chat? <laughs> uh, so down at the, <laughs> so down at the bottom? Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there's a little, bu little button for chat. Oh, okay. Going to chat. Um, but um, she thanked us and said she's looking forward to our next presentation. And we're, we're so thrilled we're, you're here. We're looking, we're looking forward to our next presentation as well. So if there are no more questions, uh, I think we will, we will call this one an evening. Thank you very much, everybody, for showing up. Uh, we really appreciate it, and um, you know we're we're um, we're excited. We're excited about this whole venture um, in sort of helping out with you know we, between the two of us, we have almost fifty years of of um, <laughs> of industry experience, really. So you know we're we're um, we're thrilled to be able to to share it in any way we can. So, um, alrighty, folks. Uh, have a good night and I'm going to